Hello there. I'm Monica Reinagel, and you are listening to the Nutrition Diva podcast. Welcome. This week, we're talking about the latest study to throw shade on artificial sweeteners. A study published last month in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology found that soda drinkers have a higher risk of heart disease than those who do not drink sweetened beverages. Now, the association between sugar consumption and heart disease risk is not new. As a person's sugar intake increases, so does their risk of cardiovascular disease. And this association, by the way, is seen regardless of the age, the body weight, or the exercise habits of the person. Even among those with otherwise healthy diets, you know, lots of fruits and vegetables, lean meat, whole grains, and that sort of thing, heart disease risk increases with added sugar intake. The more surprising thing about this study, however, was that those who drank a lot of artificially sweetened soda had the same elevated risk as people who drank a lot of sugar-sweetened soda. The risk of heart disease was about one-third higher among those who were high consumers of either type of soda compared to low consumers. That means if 10 out of 100 low consumers developed heart disease, then 13 out of 100 high consumers would. So let's talk a little bit about how sugar can hurt your health. Those who consume more added sugars are more likely to be overweight, and that certainly contributes to heart disease risk. But even when you're not overweight, a diet high in sugar can raise your triglyceride levels. That's the amount of fat that is circulating in your bloodstream. It may also lead to fatty deposits in the liver. And these could be some of the mechanisms that would explain the link between sugar intake and heart disease risk. But none of that explains how artificial sweeteners might increase cardiovascular risk. And that's the real mystery here. There's no obvious mechanism to explain how artificial sweeteners might hurt your heart. And this is not the first mystery regarding zero-calorie sweeteners. Despite being low in sugar and calories, artificial sweetener use has been linked with increasing rates of diabetes and obesity. Now, early on, theories were proposed to try to explain this. Maybe, we thought, the sweet taste somehow tricks the body into responding as if it is actually sugar. Or perhaps artificial sweeteners increase our appetite or make us crave sugar. Research designed to test those theories has so far come up empty-handed. Well, not completely empty-handed, but, as is so often the case, research in humans fails to bear out preliminary findings in lab rats. The best theory we have at the moment to explain this apparent paradox is that the artificial sweeteners might change the makeup of our gut microbiome in ways that promote weight gain or diabetes. And unlike the other hypotheses, there is some human research to support this. And perhaps something similar is underlying this latest finding regarding heart disease. But I think the larger point here is that the data consistently contradict the notion that artificial sweeteners are somehow healthier or perhaps less unhealthy than sugar. Both are fine in moderation, of course, but high consumption of either one, either sugar or artificial sweeteners, is linked to poorer health outcomes. The key word here, of course, is linked. As the artificial sweetener industry would very much like to remind everyone, correlation is not causation. And most of the data that we have on this question are observational. They come from big epidemiological studies that look at dietary patterns and health outcomes over long stretches of time. And that sort of study cannot prove that artificial sweeteners cause any of those health problems but they do often seem to be nearby when these problems occur. So should we quit drinking soda? Do we need to change what we're doing based on this latest research? I think that really depends on what you're doing. If you occasionally have a diet soda, I don't think you have anything to worry about. For that matter, if you occasionally have a regular soda, I don't think that's cause for alarm either. But if you're drinking soda, whether regular or diet, on a daily basis, that might be more of a concern. 
Aside from whatever effects the sugar or the artificial sweeteners are having on your body, sweetened foods and beverages, whether they're sweetened with sugar or with artificial sweeteners, don't contribute much nutrition to your diet, and they may easily crowd more nutritious foods out of your diet. The point is that reaching for a diet soda instead of a regular soda doesn't really constitute a nutritional upgrade. If you really want a healthier alternative, choose water or sparkling water. And by the same token, if you're looking for a healthier sweet treat, a piece of fresh or dried fruit is going to be a better choice than an artificially sweetened brownie or ice cream. My advice is to exercise the same degree of moderation with artificial sweeteners as you would with added sugars. Now, as you recall, the guidelines for added sugars are to limit them to about 25 grams per day. And remember, we don't count the naturally occurring sugars in fruit or in dairy products towards that total, but we do include honey, molasses, maple syrup, and other so-called natural sweeteners. So what does that translate to in terms of artificial sweeteners? The equivalent of 25 grams per day in a non-caloric sweetener would be about three packets or one diet soda per day. In the show notes for today's show, which are at quickanddirtytips.com, I have links to the research that I discussed today. You'll find them at the bottom of the page. Just click on the little red plus sign to see the sources. And I've also included links to some past episodes that I've done on artificial sweeteners and sugar and what constitutes a moderate intake. Our show is written by me, Monica Reinagel. It's edited by Karen Hertzberg, produced by Nathan Sems, and our team at Macmillan Audio also includes Morgan Ratner, Michelle Margulis, Emily Miller, and our director, Kathy Doyle. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week.